All right, no stranger to this next speaker. Uh, he's going to talk about the influence of cell by, of, of cells by signaling hormones to protect against cancer and the importance of estrogen. So Dr. Seas, if you could say a couple of great words about our next speaker, Dr. Uzi Rice. Welcome. I don't see Uzi up there. Where is he? Where, Karen, where is Uzi? He's on. Oh, there you are. Okay. How hey, are you doing? Good hey I can't. I, okay. So it's my privilege as I just got to introduce Erica of the East Coast. I get to, I get to introduce Uzi Rice of the West Coast, but of the world. I mean, I can't say enough about Uzi. He is a thought leader. He's a giant. And I'm going to tell you something. This guy makes me think every day because he keeps asking me questions every day and he challenges me every day. And uh, I, I'm just so fortunate to be actually practicing with Uzi and um, I keep learning from, from a giant like Uzi. So we are really privileged to have another person who's written many books on, uh, on, on hormones and aspects of better living and cell efficiency. And I'm gonna tell you that Uzi and Erica are two of the people that have paved the way for all of us. And Uzi, always for me, it's, it's such a distinguished pleasure for me to be anywhere with you and to actually uh, be involved with some of your patient care. And we are really lucky to have you here today. And um, I could keep talking about you all day long, you know that. So I'm gonna leave it to you, my friend, and uh, let's go with it. Thank you very much, Dr. Seed, for inviting me, Chris, the Lymphoma Association. I really feel privileged because I have some personal connection to this group. And I want to talk about something very simple, but very important to the people that connected with the Lymphoma Association. Because the innovative treatment that the Lymphoma Association have given to their patients. Many times bring women relatively young into the effect of menopause. And mind you, your menopause at 20, 30, and, or 40, because your hormones are not working as well as they had before, this is very significant. And especially at a time that the overall thought process is in the population that estrogen is not good for you. When you talk to women about estrogen, the first question they ask, would I gain weight? Would I have breast cancer? And I want to clarify today, this all this myth about the danger of using of estrogen basically doesn't exist. The study that had shown the estrogen is dangerous to you, are rigged, manipulated, lied to, and intentionally does so. Now, first, how I can say that estrogen protect women from breast cancer? Well, estrogen increase apoptosis. You know, apoptosis is a mechanism the body has that give the cell last chance before he turn into the process that lead to cancer to recuse himself and start to behave normally. Estrogen improves significantly this process all the big inflammation factor in the body, NF kappa beta, interleukin six, interleukin 11, the lead and enhance the formation of cancer, all of them get suppressed by estrogen. And one of the main reasons that kill women from breast cancer is stem cell. Estrogen decreases breast cancer stem cell. This is the worst portion of a breast cancer. One of the main mechanisms the body has to protect us from cancer is P53. Now you'll see later on that the general understanding and knowledge 
and treatment of breast cancer today is elimination of estrogen. But elimination of estrogen eliminate this important process for protecting us from breast cancer. So how something that's so good can be eliminated for the sake of helping you, I don't understand. And I'm trying in a short period of time to talk about a lecture that lasts two and a half hour with few hundred slides. And I'm trying to concentrate to something very small. Now in other things, everything done on mice. So mice is the model that tell us if something will cause or will prevent breast cancer. So we took classical mice, gave him all the setup that will go and will enhance breast cancer by increasing all the inflammation factor. And when, what we did then, exactly the opposite. They took this breast on a mice that going towards formation of breast cancer and put this things we all were frightened away from, estradiol, the strongest estrogen, and put it on this mice breast and everything reduce, regress and disappear. Now, you have to understand that women without estrogen are not the same women with estrogen. And when I have time to talk about it, I first mention what happened when you take away estrogen for women. When you take away estrogen from them, everything with their daily livelihood disappear, or some of it, the hair fall, the hair get dry, the skin deteriorate, the brain don't function. They don't remember, they don't retain, they don't retrieve. There's rapid evolution towards Alzheimer. The mood fail, they become depressed, flat, uninspired, unmotivated. They don't care, they don't want to go out. They don't, again and again, they don't remember, they don't socialize. The sexuality disappear. Intimacy is painful. There's no excitement to be intimate. The vagina is dry, the skin is dry. There's more cardiovascular disease, there are more stroke, there are more osteoporosis. What kind of life without estrogen? So I want to put things straight and show you that the message of estrogen being bad, it's all rigged, it's all lied, it's all manipulated. And I'll show it in the most scientific way. This is not me, this is the real data. And we'll come later on to show that estrogen was the first treatment ever for breast cancer. But 25 years ago, in, in 2001, this is now 19 years ago, the most known woman in epidemiology from John Hopkins, Trudy Bush, summarized 25 years of experience of hormone and breast cancer. She took 50 of the best study ever published, summarized it, and came with a conclusion that estrogen does not increase breast cancer. And this was published in the main obstetric and gynecologist journal in 2001. It's interesting that only nine months later, the bombistic fanfare of the WHI study, the Women Health Initiative, they cost us all a billion wasted dollar. Came with a fanfare that estrogen is going to kill you from breast cancer. This is, was the first time that media, internet frightened every woman on this planet. You take estrogen, you die from breast cancer. Now let's understand how it can be. 
the main authority in the world just published how safe it is, how suddenly we hear totally the opposite. So we will learn that the main researcher, but there were many of them in the Women's Health Initiative, they already expressed beforehand that they don't believe in hormones. So how you give such a people to do such a study? But even worse, they wanted to make sure that they show to the population the use of estrogen will kill them from breast cancer. So what do you do? You select study population that more likely to respond badly. So first they took women that are already 20 years in menopause, 20 years without sleep, 20 years with significantly weight gain, 20 years with increase of inflammation, 20 years with more diabetes, 20 years with more cardiovascular disease, depression, insomnia, agitation, every one of those facts significantly increase breast cancer. And then you add that 50% of them are massively obese and 50% of them smoke. Where you can find such high risk population and all what they show with this un natural population that it increased breast cancer by 28%. But in the same time, if those women would use just the estrogen part of the hormone, there was 23% decrease in breast cancer. That they haven't told anybody. And when people look at this fact, that women that were using estrogen alone, a 23% decrease in breast cancer and calculate just the women in this study that stopped to take estrogen because of the data where we published close to 190,000 people die early because they stopped to take estrogen. That's a significant amount. So let's understood just as a sudden one day the whole world was announced estrogen will kill you from breast cancer. Women stop to take estrogen worldwide. The Scandinavian research everything. Everything is written. Everything is known. And in the first five years following this dreadly announcement, there was no change in the incidence of breast cancer. While we expected that we should see decrease in the incidence of breast cancer if so many women stop to take estrogen. Not only that, after five years, larger amount of women stop to take estrogen and breast cancer incidents start to go up and up and up and up. That didn't make sense to anybody. And because the Women's Health Initiative is a published study, they took the data of the study, and first we look at the statistic. I say, what kind of statistic it is? Who used such statistic? That's the kind of statistic that you use when you know you're not going to show what you want to show, and you try in the last time to get data that will be negative while they're not negative at all. So they rerun the statistic, and they use logical statistic. And what they find out? In simplicity, the statistic that WHI used was false. So all this hysteria is based on false data. And nobody is mentioning it to you. Not only that, in, within two years, the data was clear that in difference to what they say that increased cardiovascular disease and increased mortality from breast cancer, it's exactly the opposite. It decreased cardiovascular disease and decreased mortality from breast cancer in spite of this high risk population. Nobody told you about it. Nobody mentioned it. The fanfare of stopping the disease because it's so bad. 
didn't come and announce, oh, we made a mistake. It's wrong. Not only that, all the evidence that brought to the stoppage of the study vanished in two years. And nobody said anything. Nobody told the population. Nobody told we made a mistake. It's not true. Don't listen to the study. 15 years, one of the best scientists in this country that were part of the study was quiet. They didn't say anything. They let women worldwide suffer for the abuse of not giving them estrogen. And then finally, finally, one of the main scientists of the study in 2014, come and tell us that the WHI statistic, the Women Health Initiative statistic was overinterpreted, was misinterpreted, created big damage to the health of women, but giving false data. Where, how those people could live so many years with such knowledge and not announce it to the general population. Now, that's not all. Uh, I'm sorry. So look, so you have to understand, here is a study we understand now, in retrospect, after a year, that small group in the study, small group of the study, of scientists, that realize very quickly that they are not going to show that estrogen is bad, took over the data, threw away the statistician, threw away all the scientists that could make a difference in the outcome of the study and came with those false data, rig data. Now, to all of you, you have to go back, you, all of you, you have to understand the estrogen was the treatment of choice for breast cancer since the 40, in 40 and 50 and most 60, if a woman had breast cancer, the treatment she got was estrogen. And that was a fact for year. Estrogen was given in a huge amount, you have to go back, in a huge amount And when you give, you give to women huge amount of estrogen, what happened? Women retain water, they have breast pain, and they gain weight. So because of that, they decided to do something else. Let's try how anti-estrogen could work. And we'll come later on today and we'll get more about it. So as I said, here is a huge study, more than a billion dollars. And we're learning 15 years later for Robert Langer, one of the main scientists in the study. And Professor Shapiro, that the group that could give reason to the study was totally excluded from the study. The most capable people of correcting this critical misinterpretation were actively excluded. And they say the tone of the study, the analysis, the result interpretation, all were violated. 
basic scientific procedure, key scientific convention, statistical accuracy, author review, publication of professor journal Hoopla, all were false. This guy, Jacob Roswell, he was one of those few that hide around in a small room, change the statistic, read the statistic, and ran to the microphone to the whole world to announce that the estrogen is bad. Well, it took 15 years for people to have courage and stand up and say, that was wrong, that was lied. Women were given false information. And if we compare a person like this, that even before the study announced that it wouldn't be used, look a person like Professor Bauer from England that found it intolerant to carry the ignorance about avoiding from women with breast cancer estrogen. He said it's inhumane when a woman with breast cancer is expected to accept without relief some of the serious effect of menopause, which can include severe depression. And remember, when we come to women with a leukemia association, it's, it's, they are in artificial menopause many times from the basic treatment that they need. So as I said, Estrogen was not invention. Estrogen was a treatment for breast cancer for a year. And just because it was given in such high quantity and caused me, women weight gain, water retention, and breast pain, suddenly one day somebody decided, let's try anti-estrogen. And very quickly, say, oh, anti-estrogen is great. It doesn't cause breast pain. It doesn't cause water retention. Women is, are not agitated but it took us very short time to learn the anti-estrogen cause stroke, cause blindness, cause diabetes, cause uterine cancer. And it never shown to be beneficial. And then a few years later, England said, let's really look if it's better and compare women on the estrogen that was used and on the anti-estrogen, miracle, the anti-estrogen was twice less effective than the estrogen. So this whole hoopla of giving us anti-estrogen for women for breast cancer based on false, rigged, uninformed information. Another thing. So now we give women anti-estrogen with all the devastation of anti-estrogen that they don't sleep, they don't remember, they don't retain, they're depressed, flat, uninspired, the brain is flat. But what they don't tell them that so many times the anti-estrogen stopped to work. I'm looking for the first women that were suggested anti-estrogen treatment that were told that it would very quickly stop to work. And what they do when the anti-estrogen treatment stop to work? They give them very high dose of estrogen. This whole story that estrogen is so bad for you, oh, something, some, sometime, suddenly, Estrogen will save you. We'll keep on the anti-estrogen working. Not only that, it was very well known that the group of women that get anti-estrogen treatment, some of them, it will turn against them and will make the outcome significantly worse. I'm looking for the first woman that will give an anti-estrogen treatment, that she will be told that portion of them, it will work against them. Now there's so little data comparing the use of estrogen and anti-estrogen. All this mass brainwashing, 
treatment, estrogen is based, we already see based on so little, been on so few studies, they never show benefit. But in the literature, with only few times, that we compare the use of estrogen and anti-estrogen. One big study from Denmark, one big study from the Netherlands, and all of them have shown no benefit to the anti-estrogen comparing to the estrogen. But by the way, the estrogen that we are using today, are not the estrogen in those study. The estrogen in this study, although they are not chemical, they are not human estrogen. All the study in the past were from primary. When you hear the name HRT, it means they took estrogen that come from a urine of pregnant male. They took pregnant male. Why pregnant male? They have big bladder. They sedate them. They didn't let them drink water. They catheterized them. They extracted this urine and they using to make estrogen. Mind you, women here that are pregnant, the minute that you got pregnant, they put a catheter in your bladder, they close you in the bathroom, they sedate you, and they dehydrate you. And that's the estrogen that they give given to human being. So, Again and again, we know, and it was shown, that this hysteria against estrogen is based on false data, on lie, on manipulation, on choosing high risk population. And when we look at the pure tool that we use for research in breast cancer, Here's a beautiful study. We took the classical breast cancer mice. On one hand, they gave him the modern anti-estrogen treatment. On the other hand, they gave him hormone, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA. And what was the outcome? Superior anti-cancer effect to the bioidentical natural estrogen than the chemicalized estrogen. For a year, there's significant data, study after study, supporting the benefit of estrogen. Here is a study of about one, more than a thousand women with breast cancer that show the treatment with estrogen had lowered the incidence of death and metastasis. When you have cancer, what do you want? You want less deaths and less metastasis. Here is what estrogen does. One of the main and greatest GYN oncologists had made an incredible statement saying that seemed to be very little, if any risk, in giving hormone replacement therapy to women who had have breast and uterine cancer. And he made those statements based on significant data. So overall, we are still brainwashed women that estrogen is dangerous to them. We haven't told them that those estrogen were not human estrogen. We forget to tell them that all was based on rig statistic, on direct human manipulation to change the result. And tremendous amount of great honorable scientists for 15 years sat quiet and never told us and never told the population that it's all lie, it's not true. So I really want to pledge women to think that this evil message that you are not allowed to take estrogen because it will increase your risk of breast cancer 
it pays on lie. Those women that have suffered from inability to sleep, to remember, to retain, to retrieve, to think, to be happy, to laugh, to engage, to feel sexuality, to enjoy, enjoy sexuality, that visualize the deterioration of the skin, the fall of the hair. It's all based on manipulated data. Please don't allow yourself to suffer. Stand up and insist for the right to absorb your own hormone. And one last thing, pregnancy is the most protected moment in women's life. In pregnancy, the good estrogen go up by thousandfold. Another strong estrogen go up by tenfold. And what happened to breast cancer? It go down by 7%. So please don't be pulled to believe that there's any right in truth on avoiding estrogen from you when you have breast cancer. Thank you. Wow, Uzi, that was just amazing. And I, I can't thank you enough for, you know, I hope the audience realizes Uzi travels the world speaking uh, about this. and. You really honed in on a very some very important points in the realization that estrogen is is involved in the p53 tumor suppressor gene, and I think that says it all right there. That p that estrogen is so vital to the function of p53 as the master regulator of of the genome, and in fact, I think Uzi, what's really interesting is that we're seeing, you know, in treating these patients in hematological diseases, we're seeing that these patients that, that who, who do make it through, you know, they have this telomere shortening problem and they have this aging and fragility problem. Well, we know that estrogen and hormones improve telomere uh, production. And, and that's something that I don't think is emphasized enough. And, and I think what you've really done is really helped, I think, every time you get to speak about this, you really bring back the importance of, of realizing how the cell function, if we understand how these individually affect the cell and why they're important, we can read through these studies and we can read through these things that are changing. And, and that's exactly what you did. Um, Uzi, you're brilliant. And I, I can't say enough, but thank you in bringing this to, to the, uh, to the fourth, the fourth. Uh oh, Uzi's on. Uzi's on mute. <laughs> Uzi is on mute. Dr. Uzi, oh my goodness, that was so great. One more thing that I want to take away from what Dr. Uzi was was saying is the empowerment of your own education, right? And Dr. Seeds and I are are proponents of this. Uh, feel um, that only you can make the best health decisions for yourself. Of course, with the with the guidance of of a, of a licensed practitioner but also your own knowledge for your own, for, uh, so that you know and can decipher between the research that's out there. So Dr. Uzi made that abundantly clear and wow, mind blown on just how, what we know about women and even our own bodies. So thank you so much, Dr. Uzi, that was remarkable. Um, awesome, so Dr. Uzi Rice, you are excused to go. Dr. Seeds, you've got a, a quick 30 minute intermission. Um, so if you, everyone doesn't mind um, muting and stopping their video, if you do need to take a bio break, that's fine. Um, and so, uh, Dr. Fonti, so we have a lot of hosts joining us right now, but uh, they're, they're all just watching in from our private Zoom. Uh, let's, let's go on to, we have a few fun intermission activities Yay. going on. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Lots of fun intermission activities going on as we uh, wait for uh, our speakers to come back from our quick intermission. First, uh, a quick reminder, this is on YouTube Live. Feel free to get us your questions on that YouTube chat. We've got an amazing list of speakers coming up in the description box. You can also see where you can donate to directly to the LLS on our page. We are 95% there. Chris, 90%. Yay. That's awesome. I so that just means we have to up the goal then, basically. 
we got many hours ahead of us. So we're satisfied. I love it. Um, I had a little bit of an outfit change, so sorry for the for the Zoom background going all crazy. But this is the Peptide Pride shirt that you can win. Even today, the raffle tickets have all been distributed. If you don't have your number, email us to info at C's.md. That was all sent yesterday. That doesn't mean you can't win this shirt, though. It's a fantastic shirt, near and dear to our hearts. Someone is sharing their screen. Um, so please, uh, Dr. Bautista, please unshare your screen for a second. If anybody doesn't think this is live, <laughs> they, this is live. <laughs> this <laughs> anybody is, at home, yeah. <laughs> yes, this is a live stream. Um, so I'm gonna stop his sharing for him. <laughs> awesome. So like I said, uh, we're still gonna give away all, everyone who donates over $25, this Peptide Pride shirt from Dr. C. And by we, I mean, really, it's Dr. Seed's giving it away. So <laughs> I have to thank him. Um, Chris is going to talk about another fantastic day of prize campaign that we have going on today. But I don't want to reveal that just yet. Um, instead, I want to remind us as to why we are here today. Uh, I want to remind us about what it is that we are working towards. And by that, I'm going to share a quick video on the LLS and the Light the Night campaign, so bear with me. When you or someone you love hear the words, you have cancer, it is one of the darkest moments in your life. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Light the Night brings light to the darkness of cancer through hope, research, and support for patients and their families. Imagine if every time a patient saw light in a dark moment, they felt the warmth of millions of supporters, cheering them to a victory against cancer. Imagine if every time a family member saw a lantern glowing bright, they knew there was a researcher on the brink of a cure. Imagine if every time a caregiver saw a light shining in the window, they knew thousands of families were wishing them strength and courage. This is our promise. We will be a light in the darkness. We will be hope where there is despair. We will bring community to a sense of loneliness. We will tirelessly search for a cure for cancer. We will light the night. Take one. Is it hard for you to say those words? We're trying to cure cancer. That's a, a really good question and why it's hard to say we want to cure cancer. We do. And uh, I think sometimes it's hard actually to think that you might actually succeed. Patients that we're treating on this clinical trial have absolutely no other options left for them. These are patients who are unfortunately uh, destined to die of their disease and in a fairly short amount of time. So Emma is uh, incredibly matter-of-fact about all of this stuff. This was a child who had had her leukemia come back twice. The parents were looking for a miracle. What we've learned how to do is train the immune system to recognize and then kill tumor cells. It's a procedure where we collect their T cells and they are infected with a virus that will genetically change them so that they will now see and react against their leukemia cells. And we actually use the HIV virus to do that. So you're taking the HIV virus and infecting healthy cells with it to help kill cancer? Yes. The virus has been engineered so that it can't cause disease anymore but it still retains the ability to reprogram the immune system so that it will now uh, attack cancer cells. We call those modified immune cells serial killer cells. Each infused cell can kill more than a thousand different tumor cells. But the reality is the dramatic responses of cancer to new treatments are very unusual. We need to make it clear when we talk to a family that it may not work. 
Emma was given her T-cell treatment, and within a few days, she was very sick. She had breathing difficulties. She had blood pressure difficulties. We knew that she could not have gotten any sicker without actually dying. But then a remarkable thing happened. The T cells were growing. They were starting to fight the cancer. Within hours, Emma's fever disappeared. It was like the calm after the storm. The clouds went away. And she woke up, and there was no leukemia. When that child survived, it was, of course, an amazing uh, uh, event. Mm -hmm.